Hi, I'm Michelle, and this is a Rise and Reignite fitness class. Today, it is a legendary workout, which for me is super fun, and I hope for you it's super fun. Basically, the whole workout is just working out intensely, but to really fun stories. So we're going to start by bringing our hands to our hips and just bring those legs up. We're going to pretty quickly move into bringing those hands up into 90 degree angles and pulling back as we warm up. So this is just to get those hip flexors starting to move, those arms and upper body engaged. So this workout is great for you if you are like me, if you're kind of nerdy and want to hear stories, but you also want to get a workout in, you're in the right place. Today we're going all over the world to some places we haven't gone before. We've got five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and start jogging in place here. Getting our whole body a little bit warmer. Breathe in and out. A bit longer. So again, this is going to be a, sorry, I got distracted because I used a timer and an ad came up instead of giving me the timer, which seems like the exact opposite use of an interval timer. All right, you got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, stand. So go and take a wide lunge out with your right leg. Lean over and bring it back up. And then switch over to the left. Pull down. Oh, yeah. And bring it up. And switch to the other side. And bring it up. Switch. And take it up. Good. So like most weeks, we're going to go over some uh, good and bad marriages, some children who go awry. We're actually doing some callbacks to some prior stories we've done. So it's gonna be like part two of those. Two more. Last one on this side. One more on the other side. Awesome. Bring it up, feet about shoulder width apart, hands together. Open up to one side, bring it in. Open up, bring it in. Use your breath. So this first part, this warm up, is just to get our bodies feeling good, feeling energized. A little bit warm, ready for the rest of the exercise. So this exercise will be split into four different parts, covering four different stories. You've got three and two. Final one, bring to center, open up those legs a little bit wider, slightly turn those toes in, touch down toward one foot, and then toward the other. So each of those stories we're going to cover is going to be about... Um, uh, like an eight or nine minute long journey. And then we're going to jump into a one minute cardio blast. So the cardio blast is different from the rest of it. The other parts of it, you might get winded, you might feel out of breath, um, but it's not meant to be intense cardio. We do one minute of intense cardio before we get a break. We got five, four, three, two, one, pull it all the way up. Extend your right leg out, sweep down, pull underneath, pull all the way up, and switch. Oh yeah. Getting that pull in your hamstrings, in those calves. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. Feels like heaven. We're going there often today. Reach down and pull up. Nice and strong. You got three and two. Final one here. I'm going to go back to jogging in place, getting that full body warm again. Use your breath still. Bring those arms up a little bit higher. We're going to go to full jumping jacks here, giving up another level. Take it up. Again, breathe in and out. You don't need to move super fast here. This is just to get yourself feeling groovy. Ten more. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, last one, come down, hands to your hips. We're gonna open up that gate, oh yes. Switching side to side and working into those hip flexors. Again, don't come up so high that you're hurting yourself. Your body isn't quite ready yet for everything we're gonna do. So give yourself the space to sort of feel out those tension spots your body might still have right now. Pass from side to side. Really good, nice and steady. 
We're gonna be here for about 10 more seconds. So try moving those legs up a little bit higher, getting up a little bit higher, getting that stretch in. You got five seconds left. Then you're gonna get a 10 second break to pick up your weights. We're gonna start with our heavier weights today. Three, two, one. Awesome, go ahead and grab those heavier weights. Bring them here in front of you, right to the tops of your legs. Slightly bend those knees, bring those arms out. You're gonna pull all the way in, push all the way out. Standard bicep curls. We are here for the explanation portion. So the first area we're going to is Caucasia. And so this is the area between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. And, uh, we're going into some of their old folklore and their old stories there, their saga there. And um, so the area that is today would be like Russia, Georgia is the countries we're looking at. You're gonna do three more, three, two, final one, take it up, bring it down. So these people, we're gonna grab our lighter set of hand weights. These people have a tree, bring them out to your sides. We're gonna pull those arms back and we're gonna squeeze, push up, and then squeeze down, push up. Squeeze down. If you wanna do this with heavier weights, totally fine. You do you, grab what you need. Pull down and squeeze, pull it up. So right now we are being the tree. They have a magical tree, it's a golden tree. And the golden tree grows magic apples. You've got three, two, Last one, hands to your hips. You're gonna extend an arm out, pull in, extend out, pull back in and switch to the other side. So I bet you're wondering what happens when you eat these magical fruits. These fruits are apples, they are half um, sheer snow white on one side, right? Um, a ghastly shade of white and on the other side they are the purest, deepest red. And so when you eat from the white side of the apple, you die. No, you don't, you have a baby. So you have a baby when you eat the white side of the apple, and that baby is a female baby with white hair. But when you eat from the red side of the apple, you die. Nope, you have a baby. You have a baby boy with white hair. So no matter which side of the apple you bite from, you get a baby. Um, and so they have this magical tree. We're gonna use three and two. Final one, awesome. Bring it down to this, uh, right in front of your legs. And you're gonna bring those arms up, directly in front of you and down, up and down. Major Frankenstein moment here. So they have a, um, so they have this tree and then one day all of the apples are missing. So they get together and they say, what do we do? But they can already see new apples are growing and so they're not too worried. They're gonna be full within about a day. So people can keep having babies, great. They're not concerned. Um, so then the next day though, they come out and the apples are gone. So they say, we need to do something a little bit smarter this time. We're gonna set out a soldier who's to stand guard in the night just like we are doing. Standing guard, yes, apparently that's what we're doing. Um, and so he stands guard all night long, and in the morning they go and look, and the apples are stolen. So go ahead and bring your legs out uh, to wider than hip distance apart, bring those arms down, start lifting up, pulling down. So they say, we gotta get craftier. So they put up this big, like six foot tall bush of thorns all around this apple tree to prevent people from getting able to steal the apples. But then in the morning, they look at the apple tree and yet again, their baby making is like just through it. They don't have it, it's not there. The apples are all gone, so they say, okay, next step, you're gonna bring those arms up, flip them over, pull them in, push them out. We're gonna get six men all clad in their super army, army gear, ready to fight off whoever is coming our way, and we're gonna have them uh, standing guard all night long in a big circle around the tree. So they have these guys out there all night, and in the morning, they go and look, and there are no apples, and they say, how could these guys have missed it? But there aren't any footprints, there aren't any hoof prints, there aren't any apples, the life is a mystery. So they get these two brothers to come and help protect. We're gonna come down, we're gonna zigzag ourselves for a moment, bring those arms up to your chest, open them up to the side, bring them back in. Open them up, bring them in, open up. So you're really squeezing those shoulder blades at the back here. So they go and um, they're getting these two brothers to watch. They stay awake. 
one of the brothers, oh, and they are well known far and wide for their master like archery and sword skills. And so they're sitting watch. One brother falls asleep, the swordsman, but the archery guy is awake when he sees three doves fly in, grab the apples and go. We're gonna do two more, two, final one, pull it up, bring yourself all the way up, legs come apart, open those arms up, pull one arm to the side, pull it in like you're shooting an arrow, open it up, switch to the other side, pull it in, open up, switch in, pull it up. Forgive me if I lose track while I'm telling the story. So as he's, uh, he, he sees the bird, he nicks the bird though, he doesn't fully kill it, but he nicks the bird and then he goes and wipes up the blood with a handkerchief and wakes up his brother and says, brother, I found a bird that is why we are having our problem and we need to go follow the blood that's been trailing behind this bird in order to get to the apples and figure out what's going on. And so they follow the blood trail, last two, Last one, awesome. You're gonna bring those legs slightly wider, bring those arms up over you, dip them down, pull them up, smash them down. Dip them up, pull them up, smash them down. So then uh, they meet, they see that the birds flew over this water and the younger brother, the one who had the sword says, older brother, if we do not capture these birds, we will never be able to live that down. So we need to go capture, I know what to do. I have a sword and swordsmanship so amazing. We'll go to the edge of the water, smash that sword down and create like a walkway, Moses style, through the water. And so he goes and walks through, last two and final one and come back to center. We're gonna bring those arms right here to your waist, pull it up, eat, and bring it back in. So while he's walking, he happens across a magic castle in this middle of this water area. And he goes in and it starts to be served all this food. And while he's there, he asks, hey, he finds an apple and he's like, where'd you get this apple from? He said, our three sisters go and get these apples. And one of them was injured and she can be healed with her own blood. And he's like, luckily I have the handkerchief. So they use her own blood to wake her up and then she uh, recovers and they get married because that's what you do. Last two, pull it in, bring it out, down. Last one, pull it in. And we're gonna move into our cardio blast. We're gonna be those birds, okay? So we're gonna start with normal jumping jacks. Except we're doing them fast pace. You got wings, baby, use them. Take them up. Use your breath. This part should get you winded. The rest of it, maybe you can have a conversation during. This part, not so much. All right, 10 more here. You got 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, changing directions up and over, up and over. Use your breath. You're only here for one minute. You can push through. You've only got 25 seconds left. Use that breath, pull up and in. Almost there. We're gonna switch to jumping jacks for the last 10 seconds. Last one here, jumping jacks, take it up. 10 more seconds, take me home, guys. Five, four, three, two, last one. Yes! Whew. Man, those birds fly fast. Breathe in and out of the heart rate, come down a little bit. We're gonna move on to our next story. Our next story is, oh yeah, we're gonna go to, Japan. We're going to come down onto the ground. We're going to start with a little bit of backstory. We've got about eight seconds left here before we go ahead and get started. Let's swim. So there's this god. He's like this ultimate deity kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about, that guy? So he, uh, in his prior story, which we're going to start at the end of, he went down to get his wife from the underworld. But when he went down, he couldn't get her. So he ends up coming back up and he has to wash himself though of all that underworld, which makes sense actually in theory. I don't know why more heroes don't do that. So he's in the water, washing himself off. And while he's bathing, oh, he washes his left eye and the baby comes. He washes his right eye, and the baby comes, 
and then he washes his nose, and the baby comes. We got three, two, one. Take it down, pull it up, tuck those toes under, lift yourself up, pull yourself in. We're gonna start with full squats here. Go ahead and take those legs nice and wide, pull down and pull up. So that third baby, right? This third baby, nose white baby, that's the baby we're focusing on today. This guy, Susano, he is uh, not a great guy. We're gonna start there. Um, but actually what people are first really upset with him is his whining behavior. He's like just crying and crying and crying. His mom, he's crying, his mom is in the underworld. But you see like this is where there's a slight glitch. He doesn't have a mom. He's the baby of a nose wipe. So I don't know, it might make sense for people to be kind of upset with this really whiny behavior because like he's not whining about anything reality. So he's been whining and they say, guy, just know we are going to kick you out of heaven. <laughs> you have to go somewhere else. And so he's like, fine. Let me say bye to my sister first. We're gonna come down, we're gonna do three pulses. Pulse, two, three, take it up. Pulse, two, three, take it up. So he goes to see his sister, take it up, who is the goddess of heaven, take it up. And she is wary of this. She and he do not get along. And she says, she dresses up in like army gear, ready to fight and says, hey, I don't want any of your nonsense. And he says, I'm only here to say goodbye. Won't you allow me to say goodbye? And she's like, okay, let's test it. Let's have a battle and um, we'll see if you're sincere. And so the battle they have, she takes his sword and chews it and chews it and spits it into one, two, three pieces. That's right. I know it was all leading up to something. We're going to do five now. I think you know what's coming next. One, two, three, four, five. Take it up. Pulse. Two, three, four, five. Take it up. So she's it and spits it into three pieces. And he make, she makes three more little goddesses. And then he takes like a bead. She's wearing all these beads. And he chews it and spits it out and makes three gods. Somehow, he is the winner through this event, thus proving that he was sincere. One, two, three, four, five, take it up. While you're here, we're gonna start getting crazy. We're gonna act like crazy proud people. We're gonna take a big step back and keep that chest up high and lunge back with the other leg, pull it in, back with the other leg. I don't know why this seems so proud and arrogant to me, but it feels kind of proud and arrogant to me. And that's basically what Susan O ended up doing, right? He goes around now bragging that he won the sincerity test. Ironic and weird, right? He does all kinds of crazy things, including general debauchery. He defecates, again with that, we did this last week in Japan, again it happens here. He defecates on his sister's palace. Um, he flays a horse and throws it at maidens who get injured. Just like a list of bad things. So this goddess of heaven hides, his sister hides, um, thus ending like night and day and all that kind of stuff. So in order to get her to come back, they banish him. He's called expelled the heavenly, a divine expulsion from heaven. Last two, one on each side. Last one, not so proud anymore, is he? Take it down. So we're gonna come down to the ground. We're gonna come onto our forearms, pull ourselves up, and we're gonna lift one leg up and forward, switch to the other leg. Pull one leg in, switch to the other leg. So while on heaven, he runs into a family of two old, old parents and a daughter. And they say, we used to have eight daughters. They've all been eaten by a serpent, which is what you are, with eight heads, and we don't know what to do. So he says, Quick, grab eight barrels of sake, put them out. And so this uh, snake with eight heads comes out, drinks all the sake, gets stupid wasted, and he cuts off the heads of the serpent. And then he starts cutting the tails and finds in it a magical sword. Three and two, final one. Take it in and pull it back. You're gonna grab your heavier weight while you're down here on the ground because we're moving all the way up. 
as the last thing to come up. Take that weight, your magical sword, and a chop down. Bring it up, slice, take it up. So he gets the sword, and now he's kind of a nice guy. He gives this to his sister as like a peace offering. I don't know. But this sword is actually cooler than that because it becomes one of the symbols of the emperor. This gets passed down emperor to emperor, this sword, as well as a mirror and a, a jewel, like a bead jewel thing. And those get passed down emperor to emperor, holding the center, switching sides, down and up, lunge to the side. And that still is like a ceremonial thing today, that this sword gets passed down to each like emperor that it's like locked away in a temple kind of deal. But it is sort of a cool concept, how myths and legends often come from historical events and then get integrated into our being. All right, last two, final one. Take it down, bring it up. We're gonna put that to the side. Oh yeah, we're gonna flay a horse and throw it. Here we go, flay and throw, flay and throw, flay, throw, flay, throw, touchdown, try to get lower, throw, flay. Weirdest thing to do in a workout. Side to side, you got it, throw. Get a little lower, when you go down to touch, throw it up. You got it, we're only here for one minute. You can push through, you got it. Side to side. You keep going, keep going. You've only got about 20 seconds left. And up, get a little lower. Throw that horse. Take it up, 10 seconds left, guys. 10 seconds, that is all I'm asking of you. Take it down, explode up, you got it. Three, two, one. Yes, Whew. man, oh, it's a lot of energy. Good job. If you had a nice long break here, grab some water, whatever you need. Now, we're gonna do a call back. If you've been coming out to these, feel free to give a little shout out because it's fun to go back in time. Um, building off of a story we did before, we're gonna start by coming down to the ground, grabbing one of our weights. We're gonna got another 10 seconds. So I'll set you up for it. We're going into like Celtic Irish mythology, which is fun. And as people online often say, it's pretty metal. So go ahead and come up. Hand comes up over your head. You're gonna dip it down, sit down, reach it up at the sky. Down and sit. What are we doing? We're fishing. We are fishing for the salmon of wisdom. We have been here before, guys. This is a story. We are covering today, we're gonna to cover McCool's son. So we're gonna start with McCool, some little callback to get our backstory straight, and then move into Oshin. So McCool is this super awesome son who's one of those babies who's just an amazing baby. He finds this poet, Finnegus, who's looking for a salmon of knowledge, where you eat the salmon, and if you eat the salmon, you get all the wisdom in the world. So we're still out there fishing, and we get that salmon. Three, two, final one. Take it up, put that weight down. We're gonna come over onto our backs and start fluttering those legs. These legs are fire, because once Finnegus, with the help of McCool's rival, gets this fish, they put it onto the fire and start cooking it. And the poet's like, hey, child, watch this fish while I go do grown-up things. And while he watches the fish, McCool gets splattered with some grease from the fish, which uh, he then ends up licking off of his thumb. But that gives him some, uh, some part of eating the fish, which is what was required for the knowledge. So he finally just eats the whole fish and has ultimate knowledge, but has to access that knowledge by sucking his thumb. Yes, this is all real, which blows my mind and is super fun. Five, four, three, two, one. So we're gonna go meet McCool's wife. We're covering the whole family today. Come right onto your um, 
hands and knees. Lift one leg back behind you. Lift it up straight in line with your body. Tuck it down, up, down, up, down. So McCool's wife, she has been turned into a deer. This is before he meets her, but he is out um, uh, hunting. Captures this deer, you got three, two, hold all the way up, pull that leg in, press it out, in, out, in, out. So he captures the deer, releases it, and in doing so, he's like able to transform her to her human form. They get married, they have a kid, Oshin, and then the guy who turned her into a deer is not happy about this. He got three, two, final one. Drop that leg down. Other leg comes out and back. We're still in deer mode. Why? Because so is she. That guy turns her back into a deer. And Oshin, poor thing, is raised without a mother. She is never mentioned again when she turns into a deer for the next time. So... The next thing that happens, though, to Oshin, we're covering over, the, we're just glossing over the rest of, uh, what's his name's cool story. Oshin meets this woman on a horse, and the horse woman, three, two, final one, pull it up, pull that leg in, out. So she also has sort of like an unusual animal thing going on, because her head is the head of a pig. Yes, it's weird. Her dad did that transformation for her because of a prophecy. What prophecy and why? I tried to find out for you. I think I could with more digging, but I couldn't today. You got three, two, final one. Bring it down. Go ahead and tuck your toes under. Pull yourself up. Reach in toward those feet. Roll up nice and slow. Get those legs nice and wide. Heels are turned out. We're going to sit down like into a horse. Down onto a horse. So... Um, she tells him, hey, if you come with me and you marry me, I won't have a pig's head anymore. I'll turn into my natural form. And so he's like, great, let's do that. So she, he goes with her on her horse to this magic kingdom. This kingdom is a kingdom where time stops. We're going to hold here at the bottom. We're going to pulse, pulse, pulse. Get low, real low, guys. So he's in this kingdom where everything's beautiful, everything's amazing, everything's gorgeous. They have three kids, they have a wonderful life together. Food tastes better, the sky is prettier, life is more exciting, everything is better. You got five, four, three, two, and a hold here. Because time stands still here. After a good deal of time here, he says, Hey, it's only been like a few years, so three years is how long he's been there. He says, hey, I want to go back and see my family, sit a little lower. I want to go say hi. Um, how can I make that happen? I know I'm in this enchanted land. And so she says, you can go, use my magic horse, and do not touch the ground. Very specific instructions. So we're going to start riding that horse out of this kingdom. And he goes back to his old land to go visit dad and his dear mom. <laughs> and uh, while he's out there, he sees this whole world that he's been in, in complete shambles. Let's start galloping. So little foot side to side. Stay low, though. Stay low. And while he's out, he realizes that it's actually been 300 years. And so no longer is anything that was there before still there. But he meets this peasant who needs help moving a rock. It's like, dude, what are you thinking? So he gets on the horse to move the rock. What is he thinking? And immediately you got three, two, one, pulse low, pulse a little lower, pulse a little lower. It should burn a lot right now because why? That's what old age does to you. Yes, he immediately turns into the... 300-year-old uh, version of himself. Beard grows. He can hardly move. He can't do anything. And that is how his story ends. And that fair maiden who used to have a hog's head is out there still waiting for him. Yeah, three, two. Last one. Pull it up. Shake those legs out. We're going to come into a wide um, horse straddle. We're going to gallop. And we're just going to focus 
on trying to not touch the ground with our feet. So we're gonna come down horse to keeping one foot always on the horse. We're gonna do this for five, four, three, two, shift to the side, but don't let that foot touch the ground. Five, four, three, other side, two, shift to the side, don't let that foot touch the ground. Three, two, one, touch, three, two, one, touch, three, one, touch, three, two, one, get lower at these saddles, back and forth, side, back and side. Don't let that foot touch the ground. That's how you age in this world. It's like the original, the floor is lava. Back to the middle, got 15 seconds left here, get low. And side, down, and side, down, and side. Five seconds, side, three, two, and one. Yes, I think you've all gotten my unscathed. Breathe in and out. Oh, grab water. <laughs> Stay hydrated. You're gonna have a nice 20 second long break here. Catch your breath. Before we enter into our last and final story, just like we went to Caucasia, like in that saga series for the first time today, we're also gonna go to Cambodia for the first time today, which is a fun, fun place to go. We're gonna keep breathing for another 10 seconds me down on the ground. In our ab position, we're gonna bring those legs all the way up. So, we're gonna start by holding those legs up, dropping them down, curling them in, pushing them up. Drop them down, curl in, push. There is a hermit, and the hermit has magical powers. And the hermit has three students. One is like a goddess of water. Another is a princely manifestation of earth. Yep, I was confused by that too. Another is a like fire demon. Not super confused by that. That seems about right for fire. Pull it up, down, in, extend. Good. Keep it nice and steady here. Try to keep that lower back on the ground. You can use your hands to help push your pelvis up slightly while you do this. Three, two more, two, bring it up, and your last one, take it in, pull it up. So here we're gonna hold, and we're gonna start um, bringing our hands up, and we're gonna start cutting down one side and to the other side. Cutting down one side and to the other side. So he gives them a task. He has a magical orb and he says, I will give this magical crystal orb to whoever best completes this task. And the task was to fill a jar with morning dew. So the fire demon and the earthly prince go around slashing all the plants, trying to shake all the dew off of them. Three and two, final one, and come back to center. Bring those feet up in, uh, into a flexed foot position, hands to your side. You're going to pull up and down, pull up and down, pull up and down. So the girl, though, by the time they get back, she's already presented her water jug. What she did is she laid her scarf out on the ground in the dew overnight. And then when she woke up, she just wrung it out into the jar. So easy peasy. And he said that was the wisest way to do it. So she wins the crystal orb. Come to center. Bring both your legs up in the air. And we're going to start um, crisscrossing those legs at the top, side to side. One in front of the other, crisscrossing. So he gives them all a gift anyway. So the girl wins, she gets the orb, the earthly prince gets a dagger, and the fire demon gets a magical diamond axe. Uh, oh, the dagger's cool too, I guess, but it's just not as cool as the others. So this guy, doesn't take him long to get super jealous of this girl with the orb. So you got five, four, three, two, Last one, come down. You're gonna grab one weight. You're gonna hold this weight, lean back, and you're gonna start fluttering those legs. <sighs> yes, this bird, I know. We're in it right now, guys. Okay, so she's hanging out in the water with her water friends. We're holding her orb, keeping it safe. When the guy comes and says, I want your orb, and she says, no, and runs away. 
Um, and so she flies up into the sky to, to distract him and take her away from her friends. So you have three, two, one. Oh, holy moly. All right, drop that weight down. Come all the way up. We're going to hold these legs up here. We're going to start rotating them toward the right. He starts swinging his axe while he's chasing after this um, orb goddess woman. And while he's chasing after her, she decides to throw the orb up into the air. And he's swinging this axe in big circles. Go ahead and swing the other way. And so he swings his orb, or sorry, first the orb in going up into the air starts letting off all of this lightning blasting all around to the point where it blinds the fire demon. So he can't see. He flings his uh, axe up into the air, which then hits the orb, and the orb starts coming down. So big scissor kick down, 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 down. <sighs> Again, you can keep your hands pressed right under those glutes. <sighs> Uh, to help raise that pelvic tilt. So that orb is coming down, crashing through the air, which is making the sound of the, of the thunder. The lightning's already going, and now it's slashing through all of those clouds as well. Bring those legs up, slash it down in one swoop, pull it up, down in a swoop, pull it up. So slashing through these clouds, also creating rain as the water starts falling out of these clouds toward the earth. So this guy, the fire demon also is losing his way, falls down toward the earth as well. And she goes, the goddess goes down to meet him and decides that she will forgive him. You got three more, three, pull it up, two, pull it up. Final one. We're going to start with toe touches, either side, touch, 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 touch. And so she uses her magical powers as this orb princess. <sighs> Not a princess, I'm sorry. That's getting all sort of mythology confused. As this orb possessing goddess to uh, reignite his seeing. But they immediately then go back into the air to continue duking out this battle, which is why they have thunderstorms and rainstorms and all that jazz. Couldn't bring those legs up to a tabletop position. Pull your hands behind your neck and start pulling up. So what's kind of cool about this story is this is used culturally as part of a rain dance to bring on rain. And so that's, uh, and each of these characters actually has like garments and clothes that they wear and it's incorporated into their um, culture. And uh, I think that's just a really cool side note about how this story continues to be used, not just as a myth, but as part of the uh, overarching culture. You got three and two, final one. Go ahead and drop those legs down. We're gonna do a brief ab stretch here before we move into our final cardio blast. So let those legs come down to one side, twist in the opposite direction, breathe in and out here, and switch to the other side. Let those abs stretch it out and breathe and you're going to roll over tuck those toes under you're going to come all the way up reach in towards your feet and we're going to be the thunderstorm so you're going to take the rain down to the ground up and rain down up rain down up rain down so make it big take it all the way up you only got one minute of cardio here take it down all right we're going to add some more Dynamic moves to this. You're gonna switch to one side and then take the rain to the other side. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. You got this. You're doing great. You're more than halfway there. Hang in there. This is your last thing today. Take it home. You are fierce, independent creatures. You got this. Less than 20 seconds left, guys. Breathe and move. Make those smacks a little louder, like thunder. You're doing great. Five, four, three, two, last one. Yes! Oh, man, guys, that was amazing. You powered through a really challenging workout today. Oh, legs wide apart, breathe in. 
and exhale. Take another deep breath in all the way up and exhale. Holy moly. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. One more deep breath in, let it go. Hands to your hips. Go ahead and give them a little shake. Feel out where maybe you're still holding some tension. Come to center and start leaning forward into a nice long flat back position. Breathe deeply. Both hands touch toward the ground and start walking those hands in toward between your legs. If this isn't where you're at today, if you're just hold, hanging out out here, maybe you can't even bend down that far if you wanna keep your hands on your knees or just hang down loosely. Any of those options are great. One more breath and then turn toward the right. We're gonna lean deeply into this hip flexor stretch. Your hands can come onto your knees, opening up that chest. Try to square out those hips. This pull should be along your back leg, right where your hips meet your quads. Breathe. Let that back knee come down toward the ground. Roll back over that back knee so your hip is over that knee. Your toes come up off the ground, flexing that foot. Lean down over this front leg to get that stretch in the back of your leg and your calf. If you want to move here into a, like your version of a split stretch, you can go ahead and do so. So that would just be extending the stretch a little further. Prioritize keeping that front leg nice and straight and your hips as square as you can. It doesn't matter how deep you go. What matters is that you're really getting a good stretch. If you opted to move into that longer stretch, go ahead and pull it up here, back to the regular hamstring stretch. Bring both hands to the inside of that leg and pull that leg back around behind you. Reach your other leg forward and pull up again into this long runner's lunge. So you can be up here with your uh, back knee up off the ground or you can drop that leg down and have this hip flexor stretch down here on the ground. Either way, lean into that leg. Mm. Yes, that's what I'm talking about right there. That feeling all along that leg, right where your quad meets your hips. One more big breath here. And then you're gonna pull back, peel those front toes up off the ground. Oh. Again, you have the option here to move into your own version of the split stretch. So if you wanna creep this front leg forward, getting an ex a further extension here on the back of your leg, your hamstring and your calf, feel free to do so. Prioritize keeping straight that front leg and keeping square those hips. If you wanna practice this, you can always use pillows or something to help prop you up. If you opted to move into that split stretch, go ahead and come back up into the hamstring stretch. One more big breath here. Both hands to the inside of that leg. And we're gonna roll around so that we're facing forward. We're gonna take our right leg over our left and we're gonna start creeping down over this cow's head pose. Feeling really good, our heart rate is uh, either back down at normal or as close to it. Your breath has normalized. And all that remains of that workout are fun stories, a really good sweat, and your body feeling super energized. So good. Pull forward and breathe. Start creeping back in. Move over to the other leg. Oh yeah. Push that leg over, oh yeah. And creep forward here. 
Oh, feeling that wonderful stretch in the back of your leg. It tastes so good. One more deep breath here. And pull in. Come back to a cross-legged position. I'm gonna bring our hands over to our sides and we're gonna end with just one big breath. Inhale, reach those hands up toward the sky and then exhale, letting it all go. Guys, thank you so much for coming out today. It is so fun to do this with you. I know these stories are a little wacky. I know this workout is a little wacky, but that's what makes it fun. So if you're enjoying it, uh, let people know that you're having fun. Also, let me know if you have any stories or even regions you'd like me to start trying to cover. I look up stories every week to get ones that are engaging and fun. Uh, so let me know if there's any areas of the world you'd like me to get into a little bit more. Um, and it's the end of June, so if you've done the Summer Confidence Challenge, woohoo, good for you. Uh, and this July, we are starting a new moderate intensity class. This Thursday, it's only a half hour, and it's just to like feel a little fun, get a little groovy, but not be like dying by the end of the exercise. So those are what's coming up now, and I love you guys. Subscribe to the channel, find me on Instagram. I will talk to you soon. Bye.